VAR and away, all the Wolves complaints after their defeat to Liverpool. Ridiculous. VAR is not working. The headline in the Daily Mirror. And now this from IFAB and the General Secretary, Lucas Brood, on defining clear and obvious. Clear and obvious still remains. It's an important principle. There should not be a lot of time spent to find something marginal. If something's not clear on first sight, then it's not obvious and it shouldn't be considered. Looking at one camera angle is one thing, but looking at 15, trying to find something that was potentially not even there, this was not the idea of the VAR principle. Stuart Robson, mm. uh, offside, clear and obvious. Well, uh, I would agree with what he said there. Yes. But that's not what we've been led to believe when VAR first mm. came in. We were always told that when we were commentating on games, if somebody, if it's an offside, it's either offside or it's not offside. It doesn't matter whether it's clear and obvious. Is he offside? Is he onside? That's the decision that the VAR and the referee have to make between them. Mm. And that's not what's being said there. Mm. I know Shaq uh, knows a little bit more about that. I I'm not sure that Mr. Brood is, is speaking about offside there. I think this is just a general statement from IFAB that can be taken as, as now, pretty much a, a throwaway comment, I in think, my opinion. I think he was talking specifically about offside. Listen, hold yeah. But, but uh, at the same time, but, though, That's not what he said originally. Or they said originally, did yeah. they? Well, offside by its very nature is, is, is objective. Mm. Either right. you're offside or you're not. Just mm. as the ball is either over the line or it isn't. Now, how you apply that, how you apply that um, and how you use the technology to, to apply that is, is dependent on, on you. Each, each league does it differently. Peter, are you surprised that the IFAB General Secretary is now coming out and saying this about offside? No, no, I'm not surprised. Um, and I think his time is actually spot on, to be honest with you. Let's go back to basics. So when we introduced the VAR and when we used to introduce that uh, language of clear and obvious, yes, it was meant for subjective players, such as fouls and things, where it's clear and obvious. Offside is objective, so you're either offside or not offside. However, when you lay it on VAR on top of that, you've got to consider, well, is it, is it clear and obvious to the naked eye? It was always a given that we'd look at it and say, yes, that's, that's offside. It was never meant for minutiae detail in the technology that's being used at the moment. So I think... But, Peter, is, but is Peter quite, think, right from the start, when any commentator or co-commentator said... Well, oh, that's not clear and obvious whether he's onside or offside. We were told we could not say that because mm. it has to be onside or offside. Black and white. Black, Black and white. And, white, yeah. and then Peter's just so, now saying that it should be clear and obvious, or it should be, if it's not clear and obvious, uh, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be given. Peter? No, what, no what, what, what I'm saying there, Stu, is that, um, yes, when it was introduced, we all recognise that offside is offside or, or, or not, as the case may be. But that was based on a judgment call from your naked eye when you see it on the screen. We didn't expect to have a VAR laid on top of that, which shows minutia detail. That's not what the principle behind VAR was for. VAR was for clear and obvious for subjectivity, but also for offsides. But we didn't use that term clear and obvious for offsides because people assumed wrongly that we'd be using it just for those naked eye decisions and not the minutia detail we're seeing within technology now. John, what do you make of all of this? <laughs> I, I thought you might chuckle. Confused and, <laughs> well, just including myself, I mean, I was looking at some decisions at the weekend and for the life of me, the, the Timo Pukki offside, the more I looked at that, the more I was convinced he was onside. So it's, it's getting very, very close. I never really thought, once VAR come in, I was a little bit of a fan of it, to be honest. I thought it was going to solve a lot of problems. But when you look at Timo Pukki there, I mean, it's, in my opinion, I could be completely wrong and the guys might completely disagree with me. But I actually think he looks onside. Mm. Um, mm. And he's trying his best to get back into an onside position. I think he's on. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm going to be proved wrong because VAR has got all the technology uh, better than my naked eye when they run the lines across the screen. So I just think when VAR come in, um, I, I think they never, ever thought it was going to come down to so many decisions that were within you know, a centimetre or a few millimetres. I, I think VAR come in for the offside. And I think they were probably hoping, and the, and the lawmakers were probably hoping this was going to you know, look at attackers being half a yard offside or, or, or a yard offside and go, that's, that's the type of errors we need to clean up. Once it goes down to armpits and, and millimetres, yes, it is factual. And yes, they are, they are doing the best they can with the technology, but it's just something that we're all just getting used to. And by the way, it's still in its infancy. I keep mm. saying that. We're only, we're only, what, six or seven months into it. So 
you know, I, I, I hear a lot of people talk about cricket and, the, and, the, um, and, and all the technology that's been in cricket, and that's been going on for 10 years. And people were <clears> moaning <throat> about all the technology in the first few years. But we're six months into it, into football, so maybe we've just got to give it a little bit of time. Well, six months into the Premier League. Right. It's been going around the world for about four years now. Yeah. And yeah. only the Premier League have had the problems... It's other te other uh, leagues have had slight problems, but yeah. not as much. But, but the, the Premier League yeah. have, have have employed their own protocols. Um, they've employed their, their own technology. They're, they're using the Hawkeye technology, which I'm not sure everybody else does. And that's, I mean, again, I, I think the Premier League's own protocols are to blame for most of these issues. I, I want to go back to what yeah. John brought up. John, you, your timing was perfect. You mentioned cricket. Peter Walton is with us. Uh, it may surprise you to learn. He also writes a, a column in The Times called The Expert View. Uh, and, uh, and on this, Peter, he said, with the marginal offside call that cancelled out Wolves' equaliser, is it a case of the law technology? There needs to be, in inverted commas, an umpire's call ruling for such tight offside decisions. Peter, rather like there is in cricket, I guess is what you're saying, when the technology is, is used, but it's still got to be the referee's call. Yeah, look, um, well, what I'm saying there is that's possibly one possible solution. There's a lot of solutions being banded around at the moment. All I'm saying is that because the, 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 the tightness, the marginal call there, very much like cricket, and there's people around the world exactly understand exactly what an umpire's call is, where the technology suggests that maybe he's, he's a hit in the wicket, maybe he's not, so you go with the umpire's decision on the day, and that way you get a, a factual given uh, answer. But then you'd have, the to change, you'd have to change the way the assistants referee because, or, or do their yeah. job because they'd have to put the flag up if they thought it was offside mm -hmm. rather than letting play go on. Mm. And, and, that, and that, that's right, Stuart. Uh, and, and so the game evolves and so the assistant's uh, a job, job evolves. But that's just one element we're saying there. If I just can go back very quickly, Don makes some good points about, you know, it was never meant for those marginal calls. It was VAR was never meant for a, a guy to sit at a camera angle and keep rolling backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards to see if he can find... You know, an offside decision. It was meant for that person to look at the, probably the one camera angle and say, wow, how did we miss that? That's offside. That's what it was for, and that was the principles behind it. Mm. Well, for a very yeah, sober... Can I just give you my, my little on, idea quick. on it? Can I just give you very, very quickly just my idea on that? Instead of having two lines where you've got an offside and an onside and you've got a player, just for instance, an attacker's half a yard offside, instead of having the two lines, just put one line across... And then you can see that that player is half a yard offside. You go, yes, 100% he's offside. Once that player then comes within millimetres or a centimetre and you put the one line across and you can't tell, then surely the benefit has to be given to the attacker. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.